All right, we're going to drain some oil and see what comes out of it because the last time it was a little flaky and it yes, yeah, it's very flaky. going to a subscriber we're gonna go with a different 69 millimeter pulley we're gonna go with a grip tech this time so this one has the smooth six rib here so we're gonna try out a grip tech 69 millimeter pulley six rib before we go to the eight yes we need that eventually the eight rib is like 1800 bucks now we're gonna do that eventually and yeah I know we're talking about cost and you think about all the money's gone into this well there's, remember there's a long backstory about putting this car back together so we got to save back up but uh, we do need to get this car on E85 as quick as possible so what I think we're gonna do is I don't know if we're gonna do any dyno hits let me know in the comments below because with the 88 millimeter pull that we have on this car right now which is your base pulley it's making I would think 11 12 psi somewhere in that ballpark so is that kind of really worth seeing on the dyno on the track as far as you know what it's going to put i i guess it probably is to tell the story but we do need to get the car to 85 as much as possible and it stretched the legs of this engine quite a bit because it is rated for 1400 horsepower right anyway i digress so we're going to go mail this off then we have to go try to sneak in to get this thing not realigned but the steering is I'm picky. Steering wheel is still a little bit crooked, so we got to fix that hopefully. And then the highlight of the video is we're going to change the oil again. So we are at, uh, what are we at? What are we at? What are we at? Let's see. We're 504 miles on this brand new built motor. I've already changed the oil how many times? Once? Yeah, I've already changed the oil once. I got all that, that uh, breaking stuff out of it and about, I changed about 250 miles. Here we are a couple hundred miles later and I want to do it again. According to RPG, we're not supposed to run 550 in this car until we reach 1,000 miles. I know I'm rambling, but on that note... I love a blower car, man. There's so much, so much instant power. Uh, on that note, I don't know how hard I want to push it on the drag strip or at all before we reach a thousand miles. So what I'm thinking about doing is taking a road trip this weekend, go visit my buddy Ken, Speed Addict 731. This is, I, I don't really need to maybe do it, but this is kind of more peace of mind and I'm just interested and oil is cheap, but engines are not. So we want to make sure that things are healthy as we start to get more aggressive with the, uh, you know, with the engine and everything as far as pushing it on the street and then eventually the racetrack. Now we're gonna go to Walmart, okay? We're gonna try to find like the cheapest 530 that we can. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're, we're gonna go to Walmart and find something. Uh, it's gonna be interesting, but yeah. There is somewhat of a warranty on this engine with RPG, so we want to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do to keep that. Anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna do it. So we're gonna use the cheap oil. <laughs> we're gonna use some cheap. All right, guys, we're back home, back in the garage. Time to get to the final point of this video, man. We're gonna put some uh, cheap oil. So Walmart didn't actually have it. This is really a common thing these days. Is it's tough to find regular conventional oil. So real quick, why conventional oil for the first thousand miles? Why not like a synthetic blend or you know full synthetic or anything like that? So the theory is that uh, synthetics, you know, they they're more slippery. Um, so we want a slower flow of oil through the engine uh, to help up, you know, clean up any debris, stuff like that, help seat the rings a little bit better. And that's kind of the rhyme and reason behind regular conventional oil, the cheap stuff, for engine break-in. Now, yes, if you're doing this, the proper way to do it may be to order like an actual break-in engine oil. I didn't have that. So what we have is a Fram regular conventional oil. Got it from uh, Advance Auto, I think. Yeah, Advance Auto, because Walmart did not have this. So a regular 530. And again, at 1,000 miles, we're going to change over to a full synthetic Motorcraft 
5W50. And that is what you're going to run is a 550 weight oil, uh, whatever brand you choose, full synthetic and any kind of boosted, you know, like 2015 up Mustang or maybe even, you know, further back. So you want something a little bit thicker. And we're always using this right here is a Motocraft FL500S, uh, pretty standard stuff here, regular uh, OEM spec oil filter for the Mustang, but <clears throat> I, I don't mess around with any other brands for oil filters. Motocraft does the trick. They're cheap. They just work. I don't really want to put the car on a racetrack and really start hammering on it and beating on it hard over and over and over and over again until I have that thousand miles done. And now I do want to say another thing about regular conventional oil, guys, if you do not know for like engine break-in, you know, these things don't have like friction modifiers or any of those other additives in there, which you don't really want uh, for break-in you know engine oil so they have a driven uh break-in engine oil if you can get your hands on that and if you're doing a project this like this i would definitely recommend it but uh you know for all intents and purposes this should work and uh this is what i used the last time so this will be the second third second second oil change in 500 first 500 miles and then once a thousand miles is turned over on the clock you know we're going to dump the the good stuff in there the 550 motocraft full synthetic and then this baby will be on the racetrack, you bet your butt. So at around that same time, probably gonna pull it down. It'll be on E85 here shortly. All right, we're gonna drain some oil and see what comes out of it because the last time it was a little flaky and it had all that you know stuff in there from the fresh build. We wanna see how clean this engine oil is. This is the same brand that came, that's gonna be coming out of it, so we're using the same brand. And uh, we just kind of, you know, look, this stuff is cheap engines are not so if there's a problem if there's excessive uh metal and oil if there's anything weird you know now's the time to kind of you know check it do you have to you know change your engine oil three four five times not necessarily but this is just kind of what i'm doing because the stuff that came out of there was really dirty but it was still throughout the system so this is more or less a flush oh boy oh, i hate jack stands so this is clean probably can tell this has been clean, so we can keep it debris free. So we can have accurate test results. And please don't squirt on me in the face. Don't do it. Oh, it's all over me. Every time. It looks pretty good coming out of it. I don't see any weird flakes or anything like that. It looks pretty clean, which is definitely a good thing. So yeah, that, that engine oil's only been in there for a couple hundred miles. Now, you don't need to necessarily do like back-to-back -back oil changes over and over and over. This is just more like peace of mind for me. A lot of that assembly lube and stuff like that, I wanted to get out, which we did in the first, you know, oil change. This is just to verify this is more of a flush. And then we'll leave it alone for another 500 miles and then we'll put, you know, the good stuff in it. So uh, I do want, this is a good time for me to just kind of monitor. So guys, engines are expensive, oil is not. Um, you know, especially like a conventional oil, it's like 17, 15 to 17 dollars uh, every five gallons. So I mean, this is really a cheap test, is is what I'm trying to say. So, all uh, right, we're gonna continue draining. I don't have anything to cut the oil filter open with. That would be really cool. I even kept the last one. Maybe um, this weekend. I'm going down to. I'm gonna go see my buddy Ken. Maybe he has a tool to cut open oil filters, and I'll take them with me, and we can inspect and see. You know what was there from the very first time because there was a little bit of flake to the first engine uh oil change so but the, you know it's a brand new engine built forged everything so you know it that's kind of common but if we're seeing flake right now then that's i would think not it shouldn't we shouldn't be seeing excessive flake so anyway i'm gonna let it finish draining out and then we're gonna inspect and uh go from there all right we have our lovely engine oil out so what we're gonna do is Look for any flakes or anything weird. I see a couple. Definitely see a couple. Yes. Yeah, it's very flaky. So, all normal stuff. The engine is breaking in. We just started kind of getting onto it a little. Look at that. It looks like a brain. <laughs> That's crazy. It looks like the first time it came out. It's pretty crazy. So yeah, a little flaky, a little metallic-y. I don't want to say like flaky flaky. I mean, this is just a little bit milky, a little metallic-y. Uh, I don't see anything abnormal crazy here that, uh, you know, any crazy red flags. Again, let me know in the comments what you think. 
what maybe you're able to see. But uh, just looks like, uh, yeah, engine oil out of a uh, engine that's breaking in. All right, guys, we're done with the oil change. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Hey, let me know in the comments, what is your break-in, like, especially like this, a race-built engine. What is your break-in procedure? Again, always follow your engine builder's uh, advice, whatever they tell you. So that's what we're doing is we're following to the letter what RPG wants us to do as far as engine break-in. Uh, this is the second oil change. Did I need to do that? No, this is just a little bit more peace of mind for me And now I won't touch it again for another 500 miles So once we cross that thousand miles, we'll put the good 550 weight oil, engine oil in it And then it'll be time to take it to the racetrack. I just didn't want to really do that I don't want to go race the car until we have a little bit better oil in it So again, you know kind of important to use like an engine brake in oil uh, or conventional whatever you can get a hold of stay away from synthetics just actually just you know never mind what I'm saying just follow your engine builders advice period point blank whatever they say you do but for all of you guys that might actually build engines out there let me know what do you think about this what do you see anything weird any red flags I, I think that we're in good shape but let me know in the comments so that's going to wrap up the video, successful oil change, and we won't touch it again for another thousand miles. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Take care. Have a great day. God bless you. Until next time. Bye.